Good morning, beloved. <clears throat> Peace be with you. Today in our, <clears throat> our first reading and um, from Isaiah in our gospel with Jesus, we are learning, Jesus teaches how to pray, and in Isaiah, our first reading, he's teaching us how to hope. And so, <clears throat> um, how to hope not like um, unbelievers, uh, uh, but and not even just to hope like other like believers in some God, but how to hope with confidence in a loving Father that we have. And so Isaiah first just teaching us, giving us this promise that God God gives and speaks to him. You know this example of just like the rain, the water comes down from heaven and waters the earth and then goes back up again, and we know that natural process. He says, so shall my word not go forth without, shall not return to me um, as it goes forth without first doing my will, accomplishing uh, the task for which I set it to, to happen. And so this is basically when God speaks something, especially a promise in our life or a promise, um, a generational promise for his people, we can hold to it with confidence that God is a loving father who keeps his promises. You know, God's not just going to speak and then the promise gets dropped out there over time. But we can have this strong, confident hope that God is a father. So we're, so we're hoping out of our identity in relation with him. You know, it's one thing to hope that, oh yeah, somebody will do something that will save us. You know, it's another thing to hope, oh, my father is going to do something to save me, to help me, to comfort me. Same thing in the gospel. Jesus is this same thing. So first reading, hoping from our identity as children of God and a loving father who comforts us. And when he speaks, he does what he says. Perhaps we've had experiences with our fathers on earth who have spoken something but did not do <laughs> or forgot to do something they said. Our father never forgets to fulfill his promises. Uh, and so in the gospel, <clears throat> the same thing, not learning to just pray or have conversation or say prayers, but learning how to pray with confidence from our identity as God is our Father. How many times have probably every one of us at some point in our life fallen into praying like a pagan? Well, we're babbling. Well, if I just say enough Hail Marys, if I say enough rosaries, have you... Have you seen this even in part of our tradition, our Catholic tradition? Well, Mary needs 500 more rosaries, so if we all pray one together on Friday night, then this a task will get accomplished, you know? Well, no, that's magic. <laughs> if you do this so many times or say this the right way or say, use these exact words, then this result will happen. Well, no, that's magic. We don't believe in magic. And there's nothing we can do. We can't say like 5,000 rosaries or <clears throat> Hail Marys or Our Fathers or whatever and make God do anything. And no, God's not just sitting up there waiting for us to do enough prayers, to babble enough prayers like the pagans and then he'll finally do something, or he'll finally do what we ask him to do. That's not our relationship with our Father. <laughs> no, our Father already knows what we need he doesn't need us to pray enough Hail Marys, Our Fathers, Rosaries, or whatever, even to pray enough Masses. What he needs us to do is to pray from our identity as sons and daughters of God with a trust and a confidence that says, Father, <laughs> you know I need help right now. You know we need help right now. What's your will? in this situation because we want what you want so let your will be done we know you want your kingdom to be established and manifested on earth to be ushered in to earth so let your kingdom come and what do you want each one of us to do to help usher in the kingdom of God in our lives in our parishes here in San Diego father what what do you what are you doing remember Jesus himself said the Son can do nothing without the Father. The Son can only do what the Father is doing. And so when we pray, we're saying, Father, what are you doing? Because we can't do anything without you. 
And in fact, the sons and daughters of God can only do what God is doing. We can only share in his work. So when we pray, we don't babble like the pagans. We don't babble even like people who have some kind of faith. We, we pray as sons and daughters, seeking our Father's heart. Father, you know, uh, who is the most holy? The one who prays the most rosaries? Or the one who prays the most as a son, as a daughter? Or the one who prays with the most confidence? That our Father knows what we need before we even ask. He's just waiting for us to press into his heart. To listen, to hear his voice. So, he can, so that we can work together with him in accomplishing his will. In ushering in the kingdom of God in our lives and on the earth. That's how we pray from our identity as sons and daughters. That's how we hope, knowing that as we press into God's heart in prayer and he shows us, he reveals to us his will, it may not be, his will may not be here yet, but we can hope with confidence that if he shows us what he's going to do, he's going to do it. That's how we can, that's how sons and daughters have confidence. And that's how sons and daughters pray to our Father. So, Heavenly Father, our Father, we just turn to you with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving for this, uh, these wonderful truths that you remind us of, how we can have hope, how sons and daughters have hope and, and confidence in their Father's word and promises spoken to them, how sons and daughters pray and have conversation with their Father, pressing in to his heart to see what, to see what you want to do. And we just pray you'd continue to deepen and strengthen our core identity, our foundational identity as sons and daughters, so that everything we do in this, in this life, especially today, will flow out of that identity and out of that relationship that we have with you. We pray all these things together through Christ our Lord. Amen.